Hey there everyone, Hatesh here and let's move forward. Now, so far we have created our schema. The next point is now we make a connection on to MongoDB and just place everything and try to create our very first kind of a connection with MongoDB. We haven't yet placed anything or we haven't yet created any object in the database yet. But right now, the only thing that we'll be doing in this video is just a connection. Now this is not going to be initially a test case that we are going to write. We are going to eventually convert that into a test. But right now we're going to just write the basic code for that. And I'm going to talk a little bit more about these promises as well in a minute. So first and foremost, let's go ahead. Now I want to go ahead and open up this test directory. In the test directory, I'm going to create a new file. Now, how the structure of this file is totally dependent on you. I'm going to show you what's my way of writing these files. And every programmer has their own way of writing this. There is no right and wrong. It's totally on you. Since I'm using Mocha for all of my tests, I'm going to write it with Mo. Now, this is my way of finding it out easily and quickly at a glance that, hey, this one is using Mocha. Although surely anybody can peek into package.json and figure it out whether for the testing Mocha is being used or Chai. But still, I like to be much more clear. It makes me more comfortable when I use Mo. Followed by an underscore, and then we're gonna write all these helper tests here. So this is going to be helper file, and you're gonna see this helper file in almost every test that we are writing. I follow that by using an underscore and then a test.js. So I know this is a really long way of writing these things, but again, tests are very important. And I always like to do this convention. This is a personal one. Surely you can modify this. Now in these tests, there's going to be one common thing you're going to always see, the helper file. Now this helper file don't actually hold any of the very detailed test itself, but rather some of the helper file, which uh, what all the codes you're going to be writing in this helper file is going to help rest of the files in working more efficiently and proficiently. So that's the whole idea behind this helper file. No actual test or rigorous test is being written in this helper file. Just the helper functions are here. Okay, that's clear up. Now let's go ahead and move on to here. Now first and foremost, we're going to require mongoose here as well. So we're going to say same thing. Mongoose is going to be equal to require and then we're going to just require mongoose. Mongoose. There we go. Okay. Once this is being done, now the first and foremost target is to get a connection with MongoDB. Now what I expect from you that you have followed the series so far and whenever you type on your terminal Mongo, the Mongo shell actually opens up. If you're following like following up MongoDB, uh, Mongo Daemon and stuff like that, please go ahead and do that. All I want you to do is when you go onto your terminal, let me just try that if my terminal is still open. Uh, yes, that is. And if I just go ahead and hit uh, Mongo, it should just open up directly. We should be able to see this Angular sign. Whether on a Windows, Mac, or Linux, doesn't matter. It should happen up. Otherwise, the things that we are going to write is not going to work that efficiently. So I'm going to kill that right now and move back onto our code file. So what we'll be doing is we're going to be using this Mongoose. And this Mongoose has a lot of function. One of them is connect. So we're going to be using this connect here. There we go. Now this connect takes us a couple of parameters and I'm going to walk about that. And in fact, we have a helper file here, up there as well. So we have options. First is connection options. Then we have a callback and a whole bunch of things. So I'm going to just walk you through. Now, first and foremost, you might want to pass on a string. This string is responsible for making a connection to the database. In our case, the database is installed locally, so we can directly pass on a string. In case your database is hosted on some other servers, or maybe you are using something Atlas, anything else at all, you might want to paste the exact string which is given to you. If it is installed locally on your system, you just can type uh, Mongo, MongoDB, and followed by a colon and slash slash. It's almost like an HTTP, but this is for the database specific. Now, usually database are installed with uh, onto a separate machine. That's why this is used using this protocol here. Now, after that, my database is on localhost. So I'm going to say localhost. In case your database is hosted on some IPs or some using Atlas, you will be writing something different, uh, probably like uh, 172 uh, dot something dot something, something like that. So make sure you are totally comfortable with that. Nothing wrong in that. I'm going to say since my database is hosted on localhost. Now comes up the interesting part is what you're going to call your database. So I'm going to fire up something known as Robo 3T app. And I'm going to just open that up Robo 3T. Come on, there we go. So in the Robo 3T, all you have to do is make a connection. So make sure if it is not connected, you can just hit on connect. 
and it's gonna just load all the databases that you're having right now. I'm gonna just disconnect this one, no point of having much. So we can see we have got YouTube, YouTube, and uh, the rest of the one that we created during the series, I have deleted all of them. So this is a simple way of finding out what the database is. So now we need to write the name of this database. So we're gonna go up here, and I'm gonna call this as MongoTube. So that's the name of my database. Now, Previously, if you're working in older version of MongoDB, that's totally fine. You can just leave the things just right here. But since we are using the latest version of the MongoDB, we have to define a couple of more things. So separated by comma, it asks you to enter one more property in the curly braces. And this is now a, not an optional thing. It's like kind of a compulsory. So all you have to write is a new use new URL parser and you have to turn this flag on, true. So that's all what you have to do. Now we don't need to go much into the dev. This is like a more uh, better way of getting connected with the database. This is compulsory. If you're not gonna use this, this is gonna give you a deprecation warning, so you might want to avoid that. Now just after this, you can also pass on a callback here. That means you can pass on pair of parentheses, uh, then arrow sign and stuff like that. So you surely can go ahead and do that. Uh, I'm gonna shrink it a little bit so that it's much more better okay there we go so we definitely can pass on a callback in case you want to do further stuff right now i don't want to do anything so i'm going to just uh, remove this part here okay let's it's a little bit hard to just see right now and there we go and i'm missing this one okay there we go so this means now we are able to connect with mongodb and we are creating a new database known as mongotube again this is not at all a test this is just what we're writing up here okay so once this is being done, we are expecting that we have connected to the database, we have created a new stuff in that, so we might want to check it out whether the connection was good or not. So all we want to do is mongoose, and this time connect is done, so we need to have a connection. Now this connection, once you do that, it actually uh, is a promise, and this promise needs to be fulfilled. So whenever we say promise in JavaScript, it is assumed that you something might be clicking on your brain like dot then and dot catch. Exactly same, we, we need that. Okay, so what we're gonna do is hit enter. Notice I haven't used the semicolon and I'm gonna use dot. Now in this, people might be expecting we are gonna write then, but no, we are not gonna write then. We're gonna say once, there we go. And there we go, this is a once here. And also, just after that, we're gonna write a dot on as well. These are also promises, ES6 promises, less used, but they are used only the part of databases. Okay, so what is this once and on? These are listener to the events, whatever the event is happening, whether that's a successful event, failure event, whatever that is, these are listeners on these events, okay? Now they are going to listen to a very specific activity that is going to happen. The very first activity that they are going to listen is open. The word needs to be absolutely open, no uppercase, no lowercase, exactly what I have written, you need to write that because they are specific event being triggered by MongoDB and sent on this mongoose, okay? Now, what you really want to do when these things do happen? We can actually pass on a callback function when anything happens uh, this way. So all we are gonna do is we're gonna just log the event, we're gonna say console.log, I'm gonna remove this, Okay, so I'm gonna just say console.log and I'm gonna say uh, simply like uh, connected, anything, any string that you want to do, uh, MongoDB connected or connected, anything like that. So this is my first stuff. I know a little bit more code, but that's what we are having. Another event that I'm gonna listen is error. Okay, so what we're gonna do in case of error, we're gonna put a comma and again, we need to define a callback here. So this time I'm gonna define a callback and we're gonna go like that and we're gonna use pair of curly braces this time and put a colon there. Now on this error, this event, whenever the error appears, the callback actually receives an object which is error, and this error can further be used to display whatever the error message is. So in this case, I can just log it, and all I'm gonna say is, hey, just show me this error, whatever that error message is. So I'm gonna say, uh, simply like your error, and then I'm gonna just concatenate it with actually the error message, whatever that is. Okay, so that looks all good, that looks all awesome. So there we go, we're gonna just save it right now. Again, we haven't written any tests, this is just a connection with the MongoDB that we are trying to run here. Okay, so this should be all good, this should be all awesome, and I think we are in a position now that we can try and test out this stuff. Uh, we're gonna get on the database connected and we'll be able to see something onto this RoboMongo as well. So I'm gonna open up control and tilde to open this up. 
and we're gonna just go ahead onto the top screen and control L and now we need to run this file we're gonna run this file using node in case you have taken up my JavaScript series we know this is how we have been running all these JavaScript files so far so node and then I need to go into this test folder and inside this test folder I have just one file mo helper test.js I'm gonna run this specific file no we're not gonna do that in this in the future this is just only a couple of exceptions we have better way of running the files so we're gonna hit enter and there we go so we have got an error uh, it says error no not found a, a whole lot of errors are coming up and that's all okay because uh, all, we are getting all these errors and that's a good sign although this was not deliberate this was mistake notice here it says host localhost and there is nothing like localhost so we need to shrink that up and notice here I forgot an L here debugging is an important part now we're gonna say localhost there we go we're gonna save that again now it's time that we run again Again, debugging is a part of programming, so you should never be afraid of errors. Always look into them. So we're gonna run this file again, and this time we get a connected. Okay, that's awesome. Now let's open up our Robo3T, there we go. So we don't see anything here, uh, but I guess we should be able to connect it again. And uh, we don't have anything inside the MongoDB because we haven't actually made any entry into the database. Uh, I guess once we made any entry into the database, then we are going to able to see that. But as long as we see get connected here, I think that's a good sign. That's all good. And uh, uh, definitely uh, without any intention, we have seen the error part as well. That's all good. We were able to get this your error here and customized error. That's all good. That's all awesome. Okay, we're going to move up here. Now again, one thing, I'm gonna just press Control C to kill that. Now one thing that you might want to note down here is something uh, known as, uh, we haven't written any test here. All we have written is just a connection to the MongoDB in the programmatically version. That's all what we have done. Okay, so that's it. That's a good information for this video. I know video is getting longer. So that's it for this one and let's catch up in the next one.